so I'm here at Africa OEA 2023. Um, and you're probably wondering who this wonderful man is next to me. Um, I think he started off the whole Africa OEA project. I mean, I think there was someone else involved with just before you, Paul. Yeah. So um, we're going to just have a walk around your, this wonderful event. And then you're just going to hopefully just tell me a bit about why, why Africa OEA started, how long it's been running for, and what it means to you and the, and the city of Liverpool. So, yeah, tell the people about... Well, it wasn't actually started... It, was, it, w it wasn't actually started by me. It was started by a gentleman called Kenny Murray um, in 1992. And Kenny's a Glaswegian who travelled all over Africa and um, loved the music. And it was like, how can I get this music and where can I bring it to in the UK? Yeah. So the, the leg as legend goes, he <laughs> stuck a, like, had a pin and closed his eyes and stuck it in the map. And Liver Liverpool was the closest city. So he's like, right, I'm going to start this festival in Liverpool. And it, it, when I say festival, I mean that loosely because when, when it started, it was just a small series of gigs in the city centre, you know, yeah. Hardman House and oh, Hardman House, the, yeah. the, the, the Picket and the, the, the Irish Centre and these sort of places. Yeah, because it used to be in satellites, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I remember that, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then um, when I joined in 1998, it had moved over to um, Birkenhead Park. Yeah. And... Um, it was a completely different vibe because it didn't really involve the community and it was part of another event called the Balloon Festival. Okay. So it wasn't even autonomous. It was almost just like a little satellite event yeah. at an, another event. And I felt that, in my own personal opinion, I thought the music was good enough to stand alone and have its own showcase. So um, we were like, we need to bring this to Liverpool. Because also a lot of people in Liverpool wouldn't travel over Not to London. Birkenhead. In the, <laughs> no, London. no, because we're in Birkenhead, aren't we? Yeah, and, yeah. Then, and the nearest place was, was Liverpool. And I, I live in Liverpool, you know, I've yeah, been yeah, there yeah. since 98. We're both Liverpool. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so basically the idea was to get it over to Liverpool. So when we first brought it over to Liverpool, we did it in Concert Square in town. I remember it at Concert Square. And it was great, you know, it was like, <laughs> it was mad. It was like, we did it on a, like a Saturday and a Sunday. Yeah. And it was great. And then... After a couple of years, all of a sudden, the capacity was just way too big for Concert Square. We were like, we need to take it somewhere else. So that's where Sefton Park came into it. But not this site, the park, a smaller part of the park by the, um, by the Palm House. Okay. So we were there for a few years, and, and then all of a sudden, too big for there. And in 2008, we moved to here. And ironically, when we moved here, the site just looked too big for me. It was like going from... We went from like 5,000 to 10,000 capacity to a 40,000 capacity. So the first year that we came here, I mean, it was Capital of Culture here, and oh, the weather wasn't great. I remember, yeah. And I was a bit concerned thinking, oh, is this really going to take off? But what we had to do was build a, another site. And now, since then, I mean, like, yesterday's crowd was like I saw, insane. How many were here yesterday? How many people oh, were I mean, our license is for 40,000, so let's just say 40,000. But <laughs> over, I love this over, <laughs> over, yeah, over the uh, course of the day, I mean, it's just Yeah, I saw, yes, it was. Yeah. So what happens if it outgrows Sefton Park? Um, well, <laughs> Sefton Park's a big park, you see, so oh, yeah. we don't necessarily have to outgrow the park. We could outgrow this space, but there's no reason. I mean, Lymph used to do it where they had couple of fields which they used, you know what I mean? And there's, there's no reason why we couldn't have another stage somewhere elsewhere within the park. Yeah, Acoustic stages, you know, I stuff know. with more so, local talent. Sorry to jump in. What's your dream? Where do you see Africa Yay? I mean, because it's been running like 30 years now. Yeah. Where, where do you see Africa Yay like in, in 10 years? Do you think it's going to be a permanent fixture in Liverpool? It's, it's at that tipping point where it's costing so much now that we really need some sort of cash injection. We, we get, look, we get funding from Arts Council, we get funding yeah, from yeah. Liverpool City Council. Yeah, we were just talking about that. But yeah. it's not enough to cover what the festival costs nowadays, you know. Um, nowhere near. So, you know, obviously people donate and people um, buy merchandise, uh, which is great. I mean, we'll have to see how, um, how we do at the end of this, this year's this festival year. in terms of what people have put in um, to see where we are moving forward. But there are... There are options, there are contingencies. Why, why don't you, I, I was thinking about that, why, why are you not like going live on the ITV or in African countries? Well, I, I don't know if you're doing that already. Is that no, I think that, that the, the issue with that is we're not, um, the music that we're putting on stage isn't mainstream and um, oh, cool. it's harder and harder to, to attract that type of um, exposure from 
those coming. And also, you know, you see the crowd we had yesterday without any, hardly any, you know, we do all our own promotion. I mean, to be honest, we've had some good exposure from likes of, I think, yeah, yeah. on Radio 6 this yeah, morning. Yeah, yeah. We've been on Jazz FM. We've been on, you know, 160 buses, on Arriva buses, hey. you know. So, <laughs> you know, so, like, um, we are getting a, a, some really good promotion. So we don't really need to get more people here. But what we do need is more money, you know. More money. But uh, yeah. And is it, so I said to you, where would you like to see FKA yeah, like, in 10 years' time? Um, I mean, it's a difficult one to say because... You know, I've almost like. You're gonna like I, nah, <laughs> well, I, everyone has yeah. to retire sometime, and someone yeah. has to move, you know, move on. Just like Kenny moved on, uh, hey, and let Kenny. me and let me take over. You know, I'm, I'm sure that's gonna what well, it will happen to me in one day. But um, you know, I love programming music, so I, I, I want to stay in programming music. But yeah, in yeah. terms of the festival work, it's really, really stressful and like. Is. You know, I don't know how much more I can take going to sleep at night. All your hair goes like, yeah, you lose all your hair. You no, no, grind. but you just like you can't sleep at night because you're thinking, how am I going? How are we going to survive for another year? And it's like, you know, I, all I wish, you know, if he's, if where I want to be in ten years yeah. is to be doing a festival without having to wonder how we're going to uh, pay for it. Is that a good answer? Any big funders out there who love Africa? Yay! You, you really need to support this and, and give uh, funding to Afco Yay in, in all its guises. Charities and stuff, support Afco Yay. Um, and anyone watching backstage, what would you say is the most, uh, most uh, uh, the best thing you like about Afco Yay? What is the, the legacy that you think is? Just the fact that, like, like yesterday, I must have seen everybody. I've been in Liverpool for like since '98, as I said, and I literally saw everybody I know from Liverpool in that time, yeah, yeah. in one space, all together, enjoying it. I saw, you know, and there's loads of people here that probably don't get on in normal life, <laughs> but every week it's like an amnesty for the OEA weekend, like, you know, it's peace and love, and I just like the fact that it's the atmosphere for me, you know, and I think the music creates that atmosphere because what you put on stage, you know, if you put on loads of angry music yeah, yeah. and, you know, people are going to be angry, but if you put on love and peace and dancing music, then people are going to be happy, it's so. Fun. I mean, it's just around, it's got such an awesome family family feel about it yeah. and then in the evening it just kind of switches a bit yeah, yeah. Uh, to the evening and we're fully inclusive so you have to embrace them so that's like we programmed the likes of Zai Zai yesterday and you, I, I saw, that that and you saw them like they loved yeah. it they're all singing along and you've given you've given them something and they don't feel excluded you know what I mean so we done it first with Fuse ODG, ODG last That's year. It was yeah. brilliant. Yeah, yeah. And we'll, it's something that we'll continue to do as long as it's the right act and as long as they're playing with a live band, you know. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, if there's anyone watching back at home, uh, keep following Africa. Yeah. Do you want to give out all your details about where they can follow you? Yeah, so, right? website is africaroye.com. You can don donate on there. And also, um, all our social network sites are Africa OEA official, fa Facebook, Twitter, and uh, Instagram. So, yeah, you can donate directly to our PayPal. Every every penny counts. And as we said, we want to be here, you know, for 10 years. Um, we want to, you know, it's right. I think it's only right that, you know, people should have at least one festival that they can go to that's got world-class artists and it's for free. Uh, and that's what we're going to try and uh, carry on being the People's Festival as long as the people support us.